Hello and welcome to Databricks. Today I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to build an ETL pipeline using Databricks. ETL for large enterprises today is extremely messy and complex. They tend to have a variety of different data sources from streaming, cloud objects, to relational databases and on-prem systems in multiple different formats like unstructured, semi-structured and structured data. To get value out of all of this information and to implement common use cases in BI, data science and machine learning, they end up having to stitch together a multitude of different open source and third party tools and softwares. This approach has several challenges with it. Companies end up running into data quality issues. They struggle to perform common DML operations like deletes and merges, struggle to govern all of this data in the cloud and find difficulty in switching between batch or streaming modes based on what kind of requirement a use case has. Databricks simplifies the process of building an ETL pipeline by bringing everything in one lakehouse platform using a medallion architecture. <clears throat> in this architecture, in the first part, we land all of our raw data into, into a bronze layer. Now this data could be JSON files, it could be CSVs, could be text, from any cloud storage or from any on-prem system or data warehouses. Once our data is there in our raw format, we would then apply some cleaning and transformation data merges to create a silver data set. We can now combine multiple data sets to create a final gold, la gold layer data set, which can then be used for, which is ML ready, it's clean and can be used for any sort of dashboards or for machine learning models. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to be pulling in two data sets. I'm going to pull in some customer JSON files that have customer information like email and their names. And then I have some CSV files in a separate location, which has their spend information. I'm going to combine all of that data to create a clean data set that can then be used to build a dashboard. Now, the first step in this is loading our data from a blob storage. So first step, I'm going to create a, an empty data table where I'm going to land all of the data that's uh, that's going to be ingested. Now to do that, I can write a SQL command and all I have to do is include one keyword called uh, using Delta and some additional optional parameters if I want to create an empty Delta table. I can then use something called Databricks Autoloader to start ingesting all my files from the cloud storage into this empty table that I created. Now, Autoloader lets us efficiently scan a cloud storage folder for when new data is arriving and only ingest that new data. And this can be done in near real time or it can be triggered in batch mode. So right now I've just triggered it once. So what I've done here is I've written a Python code to, to essentially bring in uh, this data. I want to call out some, some things here that you can see. So I've just specified the format in which my data is there. So it's in a JSON file and I have my data located on an S3 bucket in a particular directory, which I specified here. And I want to save all of that in my user bronze table that I just created. When I run this command, my data starts getting pulled using Databricks autoloader from the cloud storage into the table, which I can then efficiently query using simple and common SQL commands. And we can now see that our JSON files are now available to us in a nice table. Now, the next step in our ETL process is to clean and anonymize this data. So I'm going to use the same function that I used earlier, the Databricks autoloader. And now I'm going to instead change a few things here. Now I'm going to pull in, da uh, pull in data from the table that I just created, the user bronze table, and I'm going to do some transformations on the data. So I'm going to encrypt the uh, the email ID using using an encryption technique. I'm going to change the date formats and make sure all the date fields have the right date formats. And then I'm going to store that in a user silver table. Now, once I do that, I can again now query that table using SQL. And now we can see that our email ID is encrypted and our data has been anonymized. Now, the next step is I want to now pull in spend information of those customers. So like we discussed earlier, I have different CSV files where we have information around what kind of age the customer has and what kind of, what kind of income pattern they have. So again, I'm going to use Databricks Autoloader to ingest 
these CSV files. I want to call out a couple things here. Now that we're using uh, CSV files, all I have to do is specify the CSV parameter here. And instead of loading from an S3 bucket, now I'm going to be loading from the Databricks file system where I have the spent CSV folder. Uh, and, uh, and then when I run this command, I can again get all my spent data available here. Now, once I have these two data sets available to me, the user, uh, the user silver table and the spent silver table, I want to create a final table where I can have all the information around the users and the spend in one place. So I'm going to use again, now the two tables that I just created, and I'm going to join using Autobricks loader, auto loader on the ID field. And then I'm going to save that as a user gold table. Now, once I do that, I can see from here that all my data regarding my customers, their email ID, their first names, and their income and age are all available in one place in the gold table. I can start running common DML operations like deletes and mergers on all of this data now, which is, uh, which is stored on, on the cloud. So I realized that I had to delete data from a certain date. So what I did was I ran, uh, ran a common SQL delete from command and I can see that a bunch of rows were deleted. Our data set is now ready to now be consumed by SQL dashboards or ML models. Now, this step, once you've created this entire pipeline, this notebook, I want to be able to automate it and run it, let's say every few hours or run it once a week. Now, how do I do that? I will go and click this create button on the left panel and go and hit job. I can now start creating a pipeline. And the first step I'm do going to do here is I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it a simple ETL pipeline version one. And because I wrote all my code in a notebook, that's the type that I'm using, <clears throat> but I could be using or, or building these pipelines based on a Python script, on SQL, on Java jar files. I could be chaining those together and I could be pulling in information from a Git server or an external Git repository that I have. So all, all that flexibility to architect your own pipeline is available here. Because I used a notebook, I'm gonna go and browse to my notebook. And I'm going to make sure that I'm using a cluster that I created earlier. And I'm going to go and hit create. Now, when I do that, we see a pipeline has been created. I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And that will trigger a run here. So now what I'm going to do here is you can see that there's a, a way for us to now chain in multiple notebooks in all sorts of different ways to create really complex pipelines all in one place using any site, any sort of data sources. Let me go back to the jobs and let's see what this pipeline is doing now. <clears throat> I can see that my pipeline is in uh, the green status. It's currently running. So while it's running, let me show you a couple of features and capabilities that Databricks provides out of the box that, that are going to be extremely useful. So we can, first things, we can have uh, an external Git rep repository where we want to store all of this data provided by any of the common Git providers. I can schedule this pipeline. So right now I just ran it once, but if, if I want to run it every day, every few weeks, every month, I have the ability to create a different sort of schedule. And anytime the, uh, the pipeline fails or it succeeds, if I want a notification to be sent, I can do that. And if I want to now collaborate with other people and other, uh, other data engineers on my team, I can give them permissions and I can add them using the simple uh, interface itself. While I was showing you that, uh, we can see that our pipeline has been succeeded. Uh, so the entire notebook that I just created, it ran again. Any of the new data that was there in those uh, directories on our cloud storage would have now been uh, pulled in, processed, and stored in our user goal table. And that's it. That's a simple way of creating and automating an ETL pipeline using Databricks. Thank you, and don't forget to hit subscribe.